Welcome to Custom Reads. Let's start with the story. How to find the truth when my best friend says my boyfriend cheated. I've been best friends with Becca since 2010. We started off as college roommates, and even after graduation, we lived together until 2019 when I moved in with my boyfriend, Nate. Becca has always struggled with her drinking, and it's led to some rough patches in our friendship. She genuinely tries to stay sober, but every few years, something triggers her to start drinking again. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happened earlier this summer. Last Saturday, I got a call from Becca. She was out somewhere, completely drunk, and needed a ride home. I couldn't go because I was down with the flu and on cold medicine, so Nate went to pick her up instead. A couple of days later, I noticed Nate acting a bit strange with his phone. Normally, he'd leave it face up on the coffee table while we were watching TV, but now he was putting it face down. I figured maybe he was planning a surprise, and with everything going on, I thought Becca might be in on it. Yesterday, I ran into Becca and mentioned how Nate was acting all sneaky lately. I asked her if he had said anything about proposal. Instead of answering, she got really upset and asked if I had gone through his phone. I assured her I hadn't, but then she broke down in tears and confessed that she and Nate had hooked up in his car the night he picked her up. She claimed she was too drunk to really know what she was doing. She was adamant that she had been texting him, telling him he needed to come clean to me about what happened, or else she would. I asked Becca to show me the texts, but they were all in the app signal which deletes messages after a day. So all I could see was that she and Nate had a chat thread, but nothing that they said. I told her to text Nate in front of me so I could see what he said, and she did, but we got no read receipt and so no response at all so it didn't prove anything. I asked Becca if she was sure she wasn't so drunk that she maybe imagined it or thought a dream was real, and she absolutely lost her shit on me and said that she knows that she's horrible when she drinks, but that she's not fucking delusional and she doesn't make shit up. She said that I could believe her or not, and it's my choice but she was telling me the truth. I said I needed to go home and talk to Nate. When I got back, I confronted Nate with what Becca had said. He acted shocked and flat out denied it. He claimed nothing like that happened, explaining that he had only given her a ride and they had talked about how long he and I had been together and how it might be time to get married. He admitted they had been chatting on Signal, but insisted it was all about asking her what kind of engagement ring I would like. To prove his point, Nate responded to Becca's earlier message, asking if she had made up the story about them hooking up to cover up his proposal surprise. Becca shot back that there was no proposal and told him to stop acting clueless. Then, Nate called her, pretending I wasn't there, and told her she needed to drop whatever she was doing because we were close to breaking up, and he'd rather just have the surprise ruined. Becca kept insisting he was lying until he got angry and hung up on her. Now, I'm left feeling completely lost. Nate is really upset and barely talking to me. He's frustrated that Becca acted so crazy and ruined his proposal plans, and it hurt him that I even considered believing her. Becca texted me, apologizing, but I haven't reached out to her either. I don't want to think Nate would cheat on me or take advantage of Becca in her drunken state, but part of me can't shake the feeling of uncertainty. I've known Becca for 13 years, and it's hard to believe she would lie about something so significant. Given her drinking history, I can see her possibly doing something reckless if she was really drunk. I'm stuck between not wanting to accuse Nate of something he didn't do, and not wanting to be naive either. It's a tough spot to be in, and I just don't know what to believe anymore. Comments OK Squirrel 693 Is there any proof of his proposal? Google search, phone calls to jewelries etc. While this is a tough situation, it reminds me of a post about a girl that broke up with her BF cause her friends told her he cheated on her, only to find out they lied to her years later. Damn, is there a dash cam in your car? Oh my goshness. In all my experience in living, I was even in the situation where I saw a cheater. So let me tell you this. Does your gut say to believe her? Like you don't want to believe your BF could have done this but you also feel he could have? Let me explain to you, I once saw my brother's GF at the time making out with some other guy in the club. So I tell him. He gets upset with me saying I'm lying, and I just wanted to hurt him. He doesn't believe me I have no proof no photos or anything just my emotions of rage, and wanting my brother to know his GF is a cheater. So he stays with her for a while, until a girl comes along that starts to like him. She is friends with his GF, she catches the GF also cheating on my brother. She tells my brother. 
my brother believes her. I think we want to only believe those we feel like can do us no harm. The feelings of love muddled his truth. OOP, I don't know what my gut says. It both says that Nate wouldn't do this, and that Becca wouldn't lie about it, but obviously both of those things can't be true. Mango 1588 Honestly, I'd get rid of Becca. She has a history of causing problems. And regardless of which is the truth, she's an asshole. She had a fucked your boyfriend OR lied about it in an attempt to break you up. Both are friendship ending in my book. OP, I think you're right. In the past I've forgiven her, because I've tried to be sympathetic to the fact that you can't control alcoholism, but I can't keep doing this. Legal Nebula 4797 What else has Becca done to you while drunk? I feel like more past context is needed. Does she normally blackout? Forget things? Misread situations? Has she hooked up with a past partner? Hit on guys you like? Please provide more background. The fact that they're using signal to communicate definitely makes me think it's something sketchy not some innocent thing. I am 60% believing her, but please provide additional details. OP, so in the past when she's been drunk, Becca's blacked out and started fights with me or other people. She'll say really out of line insulting things, she's kicked people out of our apartment because she didn't remember inviting them in. She's accused me of stealing clothes from her because I was wearing an outfit that looked like something that she also owned, that kind of thing. She's never hooked up with anyone that I was dating, but she's definitely hooked up with guys that she knew I was interested in. Legal Nebula 4797 Wow that's tough. I'm sorry you're in this situation because she seems like a totally unreliable narrator, but also your BF doesn't seem like he's acting that trustworthy either. What's your gut feeling? OP, I don't know. I really don't think that Nate would cheat, but I just can't imagine that Becca would completely make this up. Both of their stories somewhat make sense to me but I don't know. I don't know why Becca would be saying this if it wasn't true, but I'm afraid of deciding I definitely believe her and then having her later realize she forgot she hooked up with somebody else that night or something. Tackerman 99 My question is. Why was he sneaky only after that night? OOP, if he's telling the truth it's because it's only after that night that he started planning a proposal. Success Glittering 620 But why would he start planning the proposal while she is that drunk after that particular night? Do you think it's because he is using that to cover up what he did? Also have you noticed anything that made you think huh? From your BF toward Becca? Does Becca come across as envious of you and BF relationship? How long was he gone picking her up and dropping her off? Did he get right in the shower? Was he overly affectionate or extremely distant? OP, from what he said he didn't start planning the proposal that night, it was that Becca mentioned that we should get married already because it's been seven years, and he thought about it, and then the next day he sent her a message to ask her what kind of ring I would want. I've never noticed anything weird from Nate towards Becca, if anything he doesn't like her very much. I don't know if envious is the right word, but in the past Becca didn't like me and Nate being together because she felt like I was abandoning her for him. I'm not sure how long he was gone, I fell asleep when he was gone, and he didn't wake me up when he got back. But I know he didn't shower when he got home because that definitely would have woken me up. Untamed Italian Okay wait. She has a history of doing awful things while drunk and a history of resenting your BF, for fear of you abandoning her for him. BTW jealousy is the right word, envy is wanting what others have and jealousy is fear of losing something to another person. He didn't shower when he got home, and he's never liked Becca that much. Honestly it sounds like your BF is both more trustworthy and has less reason to lie. Update three days later. After hearing everyone's advice on Thursday night, I decided to tell Mate that I'd figured out how to recover deleted messages from Signal. He instantly grabbed his phone and opened the app, asking me to show him how. That made me feel a bit better, because it seemed like he was being honest, he didn't panic or hesitate at all. But then I tried to download Signal on my old phone, only to find out it was too outdated to support the app. Nate then asked if we needed to buy me a new phone for me to trust him. 
he said he was willing to do whatever it took to prove he was telling the truth. I reassured him that I wasn't doubting him, I just needed some proof to make sense of why Becca would lie. Nate insisted that Becca was just a crazy drunk, and that there was no rational explanation for her actions. He added that once we found those messages, it would prove he never wanted to speak to her again. Then he urged me to get up, so we could head to the Verizon store before it closed. By then I completely believed Nate anyway, so I told him we didn't have to go anywhere or get a new phone and that I believed him and I knew he didn't cheat on me and that he would never do that. Nate said that he would hope I know that and that he didn't understand why I didn't take his word for it in the first place. I started trying to explain why I didn't want to just immediately dismiss what Becca had said happened, but Nate said that he really couldn't listen to that right now. I said that was fair and agreed that I would cut Becca off, but that first I wanted to try to get her to admit that nothing happened. Nate said fine, but to call her with my phone on speaker, because he thought he also deserved to hear her admit that she was lying. So I called Becca and I said the same thing to her that I said to Nate, that I figured out how to recover deleted messages on Signal. She asked me why I would need to do that, so that was when I knew for sure that she was definitely making it up, and not just confused somehow. I said it was because I wanted to have proof of what she and Nate talked about. Becca asked me if I saw their messages, so I lied and said yes. After that Becca just went silent until finally I asked her if she was going to say anything. Then she asked me if that meant that we were engaged now. At that point I lost it. I yelled at her, asking if she was serious and what was wrong with her. How could that be her only response? Becca screamed back at me to calm down, claiming I never believed her anyway because I hadn't broken up with Nate over it. By then I was in tears, and Nate jumped in, telling Becca to go fuck herself, and to never contact us again before hanging up. A minute later, I received a wild text from Becca, which I'll quote verbatim with names changed. Courtney, you are supposed to be my friend for life, you are supposed to be there for me, you are supposed to be my person, but then you meet Nate and now you only care about Nate, everything is about Nate, tell me why Nate comes to pick me up when I call you, I called you not your precious fucking Nate, I only want you to see how fucked up this is but do you, no of course you don't, of course you choose Nate over me like you always do and like you always will, you pretend to pair him about me but I can't see you don't care, he's pathetic, Courtney, you are a pathetic woman who would choose a man over a friend, but since you can't say it yourself I will, since you have to have your sweet perfect little baby Nate do it for you I will. Goodbye Courtney, is that what you want? Goodbye forever I hope you fucking got what you fucking want. There were three dots indicating she was still typing more, but I blocked her before she could send anything else. I knew it would just be more excuses about why this was all my fault or justifications for her actions. I think Nate is right, there's no sane reasoning behind Becca's behavior. I can't help but wonder if she still blames Nate and me for her struggles. It seems like she thought that by claiming she hooked up with Nate, I'd break up with him but still want to stay friends with her, somehow fixing everything in her mind. As for Nate and me, I asked if he could ever forgive me for doubting him. He said that since I had come to my senses and cut Becca out of my life, we could try to move past it. I don't think he'll propose anytime soon though. After everything that happened, I wouldn't blame him if he decided against it. He mentioned he hadn't really planned anything yet, he'd only asked Becca about rings and what kind of proposal I'd like. It sounds like he was just gathering ideas without me knowing. I really appreciate all the advice and support from everyone. I know I didn't respond to many comments, but it meant a lot to me to have so many people willing to help. Comments Deleted while this is a perfect example of how drugs and alcohol affect behavior and logical thinking, GF thought admitting to sleeping with your serious BF would result in a positive win for her. Sorry this is going to delay your future with Nate, but hopefully with a bit of time behind you, everything will be back on course. Maybe invest in some security devices like cameras and a rape alarm in case Becca approaches. I'm guessing you haven't seen the last of her. OP, I'm sure she won't just go away, I'm already expecting her to try to get our other friends to get in the middle of everything as soon as she figures out she's actually blocked, and I'm not just ignoring her. I hope she won't try to do anything else but I guess at this point I really can't know with her. I'm hoping things are okay with Nate, I think in a while they will be. Mango 1588 I would get out ahead of that. Message your mutual friends, and explain the basics of what happened. Tell them you're not asking them to take sides or cut her off, 
but you expect that she will try to get to you through them, and you're asking them to respect your decision to end that friendship. OP, I have something like that drafted, I just know that once I send it everyone is going to want to talk to me about it, and I'm just not looking forward to it. I'll do it pretty soon though. Update one year later. I haven't logged into this account in about a year, but I've received a few messages asking for an update, so here it is. Unfortunately, I don't have any good news. After I blocked Becca it turned out that her false accusations about Nate were just the beginning of a serious mental breakdown. She created several fake accounts and bombarded me with insane messages, claiming I ruined her life and threatening revenge. This went on for months, with her sending dozens of messages daily. I learned from mutual friends that she was posting rants on Facebook, accusing me of being evil and deliberately ruining her life. I tried reaching out to the police twice to get a restraining order because I was genuinely scared Becca might show up at our apartment and attack me or Nate. I even installed a front door camera out of fear. Unfortunately the police brushed it off, saying that because she wasn't making direct threats of violence, she was just a nuisance. They basically told me to keep blocking her new accounts and that she'd eventually get bored. Things escalated when someone vandalized Nate's car by breaking its windshield while it was parked at his work. Though it could have been random vandalism, I was convinced it was Becca. I reported it to the police again and they eventually spoke to her. She denied touching Nate's car, and without proof, there wasn't much they could do. However, after talking to her, they admitted her situation was concerning enough that she was put into a psych ward for a week. Apparently her apartment was a mess, and she was constantly drunk, posing a danger to herself. Since her release from the psych ward, I haven't heard anything from Becca. I don't know if she was diagnosed, or if she's on medication now, but I found out she moved in with her dad, who thankfully lives in another state. I occasionally check her social media, just to make sure she isn't posting about me or getting too close. As for Nate, we're no longer together. He broke up with me after the windshield incident, unable to handle the constant harassment from Becca. To be honest, I don't think he ever truly forgave me for not immediately siding with him when everything went down. It hurt, but I can't blame him. I've tried to discuss fixing things between us now that Becca is gone, but he just isn't interested. TLDR, Becca went crazy for real, Nate dumped me. Comments No mercy for potatoes. Sounds like Becca, in a weird turn of event, did end up getting what she wanted. To break you guys up. But I can't blame your ex for breaking up either. Hope you're doing okay. Teach Potential 9523 no one won unless the best friend intentionally tried to break them up, and if that's the case then she did win, and that's sad. Dizzy External 4448 Nah, Nate definitely won. Destroyer 2118 I remember this one. You had to make a choice between believing your alcoholic BFF that accused your boyfriend of sexually assaulting her in a car while she was too drunk to remember anything or believing your BF that said he didn't. Both of them had the same evidence, that evidence being, trust me bro. And you chose to believe the BFF? Made Nate prove he didn't do it, which he eventually did prove. Not really surprised that Nate left. There's no way any relationship survives accusing your partner, or even believing your partner is capable of something like that. That man's entire character and integrity was called into question by someone he was about to propose to, I don't think there's any other way this could have ended. Tall Donald Glover But, Op also had this history with Becca. So in the past when she's been drunk, Becca's blacked out and started fights with me or other people. She'll say really out of line insulting things, she's kicked people out of our apartment because she didn't remember inviting them in, she's accused me of stealing clothes from her because I was wearing an outfit that looked like something that she also owned, that kind of thing. She's never hooked up with anyone that I was dating, but she's definitely hooked up with guys that she knew I was interested in. Armed with that, Becca has shown herself to lie slash misremember when drunk. So, yeah, Nate should have been believed unless Becca presented more evidence. Juicy Belly Don't beat yourself up over it. It's hard to make the right choice, and know what or who to believe, 
especially when it comes to the people we trust. You were in a tough spot, and obviously this is not your fault. Jess's game. She absolutely should beat herself up over it. Her friend was a shitshow before this whole drama. She's the one who kept her in her life as well. Never keep sloppy drunks as part of your close inner circle. 